Let's take a look at the new multi-tap delay that comes with Cubase Pro 10.5. We'll see many typical delay parameters such as our delay time, which could be synchronized to tempo or not. We also have our feedback so that we could have more delays being generated or fewer. We could have the delay sound be narrower or wider using our spatial control. And we have control for the mix so we could have the dry signal and gradually blend in the affected signal. A very handy function is this little icon that allows you to play samples. So we could audition our different delay parameters. So we could click this and listen to our different delays. If you wanted to kill the effect line, you could now just kind of come over here and erase the delay line by clicking on that icon. We'll have different modes for the delay as well. So if we want to look at, we'll listen to our digital modern. So we'll listen to the saxophone part. We also have a digital vintage, a tape, crazy. Let's go ahead and listen to a tape. There are additional character parameters that are available by clicking on this little drop down menu in the upper right hand section. Here we could add saturation to each of the subsequent delays, and we could also apply modulation. So, if we wanted to add kind of a warble effect on a track, we could listen to it like this. If we're looking for kind of a low fidelity or lo-fi delay, we could actually have different sample rate presets here. So we could listen to one eighth of the sample rate, one quarter or one half. So let's listen to one quarter just to see what it sounds like. Other settings that we'll see here are where we could have damping, and set a low cut and high cut filter. Once these have been set, we could at this point just come right here and tuck the controls away. Many times when going through different presets, we may have different delay times and mix settings set. So we could actually lock these. So as we load up different presets, for instance, we could just have those settings remain as they are, which is very helpful for auditioning different presets. Delays are commonly used on vocals, but sometimes they could really affect the intelligibility of vocals and kind of get in the way of the melody. So let's take a listen to an example here. What did you say? You wished it all So what we want to do is to maybe not have the delay happening while the singer is singing, but maybe like during moments of pause where there's no vocal to have the delay kind of creep in. So if we come here, we could actually apply a ducker to our delay and we could set our release time. And there's a two additional functions that we could have here as well. So there's a DL icon, which will erase the delay line when the ducking starts and FB, which will suppress the feedback when ducking. So let's go ahead and just listen to this and we'll start at the same point. What did you say? You wished it all away And I'm left here for a thousand years and a day Now, if we needed to do a side chaining from a different channel, the plugin does have side chain capability, and we could set the side chain input directly from here. One of my most favorite aspects of the plugin is the fact that the delays themselves can have their own effects. So let's go ahead and take a listen to a quick guitar part. And as we want to listen to it, we can see that there is a loop effect section and we could expand this view here and we can see a signal flow diagram when we click on the I symbol. 
we could have up to six different effect modules that we could load up. And if we wanted to change the order of them, we could do that. We could delete them. We could mute them. So if we wanted to have our guitar, we'll listen to our, our guitar without going through the delay. So now what I want to do is to run it through the, through the delay, have a half note delay and have that delay flanged or run through again up to six plugins. Now there's some more creative compositional aspects that we could use as well. So let's say if I have a MIDI part with a delay on it, and I will just set this to like an eighth note, let's say maybe a quarter note delay, and I wanted to put a plug in that was a pitch shifter, and we will just hit a single note and we hear our quarter note delay. And we have the pitch shifter set to one semitone, so if I bypass it, you just hear the delay. And now if with the pitch shifter on, we can hear each delay automatically just increase in the pitch. The most creative aspect of working with a multi-tap delay is using the multi-taps. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this set up. We could add multi-taps in a couple of different ways. One way is to just double click and we could add a multi-tap delay like that. So we can see our grid here is set to 16th notes. We can set that to eighth notes. Another method is to just, we could remove our taps by double clicking on the head, the number that we see there, and we have a taps grid. So we could move out, and again, we have up to eight independent taps. So if I wanted to listen directly to this, see how this sounds. And let's go ahead and just kind of play just one MIDI note that will go through our uh, multi-tap delay. So we can look, see our one MIDI note that will go through our taps here. Now another method for generating taps is to just have it random. So we could come here and set random parameters. So if I just wanted to, while it's playing, try out different random tap patterns. Or one of my favorite methods is to just click here. We'll remove all of our taps and we have this tap rhythm. So while I play, I have this set for two measures. I can now choose to just tap with my mouse. And now I'll set my delay time to be just one measure. And if I wanted to kind of clean that up rhythmically, I could actually quantize my different taps. Now each of these taps can also have independent volume control. So if I wanted to adjust the volume on all of the taps. And let's adjust our panorama or panning independently on each tap. Just like we had our effects for the loop effects, we could now have dedicated tap effects as well. If we want to look at the signal flow order of this, we could see that there. So I will go ahead and just add a filter and let's also add, uh, let's say a frequency shifter. So now we could select our different taps here. And again, we could choose from up to eight taps and we could set independent parameters per tap. So when we come right over here, as I select between my different taps, each of these can have different settings. Now at the top, we also have our tap parameters. 
So if we wanted to choose our different functions here, we say within our frequency shifter, we can now adjust different parameters. So I could adjust these individually, but there's also two uh, linking modes for the parameters. One is to adjust it absolutely. So as I move my parameters, they'll all be to the same value. Or if they're set to different parameters, we could choose to adjust them relatively. So once I click on relative here, I can now adjust and they'll all proportionally go up. At times you may want to kind of work with multiple taps and sometimes you may want to visualize it a little easier and we could do that by clicking here, which will kind of even out the spacing of taps. I could also link my taps. So if I wanted to just go directly to my tap position here and shift that all a little earlier or later, we could link those particular parameters. In addition to that, we also have the post effects where we could see all the sound from the delay going through the effects. So we'll just load up a quick preset here so you get an idea of what you can do with some of the taps. And again, this is just from a single MIDI note. So we'll listen to it. And let's adjust this to like a whole note. We could increase our feedback. Now where sometimes, you know, people ask where's like a really great place to experiment with like a multi-tap delay. And there's a lot of great guitar parts. So if you have kind of a bit of an ethereal guitar part, we'll take a listen to this one, like a slide guitar. And I'm going to just bypass and we'll listen to the guitar by itself without any effects. So now I'm just going to load up one of the presets called Beam Me Up. I will turn this on and now we'll hit play and listen to what it does to our slide guitar. So you can come up with some really creative tones and create beautiful lush soundscapes, come up with great sound design and really fresh and interesting sounds. So it's a great tool to have within the palette of plugins in Cubase Pro 10.5. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.